Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the Butler Beat. I'm Tyler Springer. Well, the Jordan College of the Arts is putting on its final theater production of the fall semester. It's called The Water Carriers. The play is about a group of refugees attempting to escape Africa in a shipping container. Here to talk more about the play is the writer and director of the play, Michael Williams. Mr. Williams is the Butler Crystal DeHaan Visiting International Theater Artist. Thank you so much for joining me today, Michael. And uh, if you could just start by telling us a little bit about what the play is about and why it's called The Water Carriers. I've done a lot of research on refugees in South Africa and uh, I was intrigued by the fact that the one thing a refugee needs is water. And of course in Africa you don't have the access to taps sure. that you would have in other places. And the thing that they carry is containers um, that contain water. And so I thought the idea of calling them the water carriers would be a, a good idea. And um, the play is really about a group of uh, people that are leaving Africa that uh, go into a container, are hidden away in the container to a destination unknown. And while they're in the container, we find out more about where they come from, uh, who they are, what their backstories are. And to sustain them on the voyage, they tell an epic African old story, which keeps them occupied on the journey. And that's what the play is about. And what was the writing process like for you? How did you first come up with this idea? I read an article about a group of people that were in a container crossing the Mediterranean. And when they arrived in England, at the port of England, the container was put into one of these massive uh, uh, ports. Yeah. And it was lost, the container. They couldn't find um, where the people were. And they were, for about eight, nine days, banging on the side of the container to draw attention. And one of the children inside the container died, and one of the elderly people died. Um, and I was so intrigued by that, that act of self-incarceration that you would put yourself into that situation for a chance of a better life. And so that was the sort of genesis of the play, really. And obviously you're bringing kind of an African tale to a college in Indiana. So how does that kind of fit in with student culture here? And why bring a play about Africa to you know, Indiana, especially towards college students? Yeah, good, good, good question. I, I think, you know, the issue of refugees is a global one. Um, America certainly has that issue. I was reading about Obama's immigration policy mm -hmm. um, just today and this week. And, of course, you have issues of um, uh, migrant workers moving all around the world. The globe is becoming a, a very small place as people are seeking for better lives. So I think the issue of refugees is something that people should know about. And, of course, you're right, the Midwest, what do they know about Africa? Well, yeah. Africa's a vast <laughs> continent. Yeah. And as part of the Crystal de Haan uh, idea is to bring uh, artists from different cultures to come to the Midwest and to give um, students the opportunity of engaging with a different reality, with a, a different world view. And uh, I've been able to do that with the students, and it's been a great journey of exploration for all of them. Yeah, and what specific elements did you really want to highlight or illuminate from Africa to really let the student body know about here at Butler? Well, I think uh, the theater style, the, the piece is uh, African physical theater, so it relies very heavily on the audience's imagination. Um, the containers contain boxes, and the refugees use what's in the boxes to tell the old story, which is very much what uh, African physical theater is about. I also wanted to highlight the issue that uh, we are uh, we're, we're hum uh, humanity, essentially, and that just because they come from Africa that doesn't mean that they're any different from anywhere else in the world. There are perceptions around Africa which uh, are uh, interesting to change. And so the students have learned a lot about um, different parts of Africa in, in the process and broadened their worldview. And then on the other hand, what can students kind of take away as a connection between them and the people portraying African refugees um, in these plays? Can they kind of connect and see in some similarities that we're all kind of the same in this play? Well, I think, I think that we are all looking for a way of actually surviving in this modern world. And that's the main thing. Is I mean, you look at a refugee and say, well, what does he actually want? Well, he wants the same thing that you want. You know, he wants a place to live that's safe. He wants to be able to earn money to bring up his family. He wants his children to be educated. These are all things that are, we have in common. And um, that's really the lot of a refugee. And uh, so that's what you can take away from it. And also the fabulous culture of Africa. You know, there's a great deal of singing and dancing in the piece. Uh, the, the actors have learned three different African languages that, they, they, that, that the songs require. We've had Ronnie Stone, a wonderful um, choreographer who specializes in West African dance, and they've learned 
how to do West African dance. So the culture is very strong and vibrant, and that's something that uh, they've enjoyed learning. And talk about that uh, incorporation of music and dance for a little bit. I mean, this is probably a pretty difficult undertaking for these Midwest students. What was that process like for them? Well, I mean, I, I run Cape Town Opera in South Africa, so yeah. my whole life is around opera. And uh, there is kind of an operatic element to the piece in the sense that it's a play with music. Right. And uh, it's quite on a, quite a grand scale. And the Schrott is a wonderful venue to accommodate those kind of, um, those kind of demands that the piece requires. So uh, I approached it from a sort of epic theater point of view, which was great for the students. And they, they had to sing and dance. Uh, they had to engage with a, a drummer who is specializes in African beats uh, and rhythm. So there's that kind of connection as well. And for them, it was it was a challenge. You know, there's something they've never done before, and that's what the whole Vita program is about. Mm -hmm. And I know you talked about. I saw the play, uh, and I you know t uh, you talked about the uh, how you colorblind cast mm. basically, mm. and you know how hard was it for these students to portray Black African people. refugees? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, in Cape Town. For years now, we have um, uh, colorblind casting, and I think it's the sense that Nelson Mandela wanted to uh, uh, encapsulate the idea of a non-racial society where we don't look at color first, but we look at our humanity first. And so the, the ritual that we do in the piece is that students come onto the stage, they see these shrines, and the ancestors come and mark them with special markings, which is a kind of a mud that is, 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 is a ritualistic moment. And in that process of the ancestor marking them, so they become the African refugee. And um, that's the way we've gone about it, because of course our black population in, in the Midwest is a lot smaller than it would be in South Africa. But I, I think that the play transcends race, and it speaks more to uh, the things that, that uh, join us rather than the things that divide us. So was there a most difficult part of directing this specific play? I think the hardest part for me was to uh, instill in the actors what it must be like to be in a container confined for two weeks. And we did an improvisation around that where we set them up in a container on campus where they were in it for an hour to get a sort of a sense of what it means to be in the dark. Um, and how they feel about doing that? Well, it was. <laughs> I, I think that in the end they enjoyed it, but the yeah. process of doing it was quite tough for them. And we, we had a lot of discussion afterwards around what it means to be isolated from your family in a dark space, unsure of where you're going. And that was what the improvisation was about. And it was really useful in the process because we were able to bring and use that experience to, um, to make the play richer for them. And talk a little bit more about the uh, casting process. How do you tell if someone could play mm. a good African black refugee? It, it, very hard. I, you know, when I, I was met so many young, talented people, I couldn't use them all. There's a cast of 18, and I think um, the theatre department has about 30 or 40 people. So mm. it was really tough. You know, how do you tell when somebody comes and does a two-minute monologue if they're going to be right? You know, and it's right. kind of an instinctive thing. But they came with so much enthusiasm and uh, passion to be in the play that actually I was spoiled for choice and I had to make a very hard decision. There were lots of people that I could have used and it was just the fact that we only had roles for 18 that we made the decision. So that was the hardest part for me in the audition. You know, having arrived here and then the next day doing audition, I didn't know anybody, you know, so that was tough. Wow, mm. and I noticed some people played two different roles. Yes. Yeah. What did that add to the play? Well, it, it, it was interesting for me to look at the fact that the refugees play a role in the old story. So the guy who's the, who is the sort of the, the asshole of the piece, Bender, who's a kind of a, a substance abuse uh, person, plays the hero in the, in the old story. And as he plays the hero, so he matures as Bender. So there's that kind of relationship that goes. The woman who is the, is the, uh, the healer, she plays the Mother Ma. So there's a, a relationship between her character and the character that she plays in the old story, which is a great acting challenge for the students to be able to play two different uh, roles. Kind of a contrast. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I know there was kind of a lot of uh, things going on. I was very impressed. There were crates coming in and things flying <laughs> from all right. the ceilings. How did you get all this stuff on the stage with these crates and, you know, portraying kind of an African setting in, right, a, yeah. in a small theater? Well, I mean, I just love to, I mean, we have the great battle of the Ka'ula birds and the Tokoloshi beasts. Yes. And it was wonderful <laughs> to create this battle scene. Yeah. 
um, and we were able to use strong percussive elements. And the whole notion of the, the piece is that they're in the container and then they're out of the container in the old story. And so it, it moves between these two worlds. And I was very blessed with a wonderful designer um, from the department. Uh, Rob did a great job in, in designing a set that could be fluid, that could actually speak to Africa. And so he, he did a fabulous job. And of course, Wendy with her costume yeah. eye, yeah. Uh, and she's been to Ghana, Wendy, so she's very much aware of what the African look needs to be. And so she did a fabulous job with the costumes. And besides the costumes and effects, there's clearly maybe a lot of legends that maybe not everyone in the audience knew about mm. with, uh, you know, Sundiata and the Griot. So talk a little bit about the legends that the characters, you know, tell and the incorporation of those African traditions. Yeah, I, I use two different um, legends. The one from Mali called Sunjata. Mm -hmm. It's an epic tale that takes about three days to tell, so I used a very small part of it. And then the Tree of Life from Credo Mutua, a tale from Southern Africa. And I kind of combined them to create a new legend, as it were, uh, used aspects of their story. And uh, those were that, that was important because it's a creation myth. And of course, in, 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 in cultures around the world, the tree of life is very prominent. The two boys, one evil, one bad, is a very strong archetype. And a lot of people have said to me, oh, Michael, this is the creation myth from Africa really resonates with our local Indian culture, the First Nation culture. And so that there is a similarity. And as you do this, as you tell these old stories, you realize, again, the commonality that we have. And so it's been wonderful to look at these two legends and bring them to life in, in, a, in a new story. Sure. And obviously, when you're not here at Butler, you're doing other stuff. You're a visiting artist here. So what are you doing when you're not at Butler? Well, I, I run Cape Town Opera. I direct mm -hmm. um, operas. I'm, we're going to be bringing Mandela Trilogy to America in 2016. Great. Um, I tour Cape Town Opera extensively to Europe. Uh, we're going to Madrid next year with Porgy and Bess. Uh, we're taking Mandela Trilogy to uh, Hong Kong. And um, I'm a writer. I write novels um, yeah. that uh, are about the South African situation. And my uh, latest book is coming out in December. So I live a very uh, full life in South Africa, and it is wonderful to be in Butler and to take a break from my other life, as it were. Do you ever see yourself coming back to Butler, maybe writing another one for us? Well, I mean, it would be wonderful to come back. And I, we have plans to bring Mandela Trilogy to Indianapolis, and uh, that will be a great experience in 2016 for the campus to engage with this great musical on, on the life of, of, of Nelson Mandela. All right, so bottom line, why should people go see the water carriers? Well, I think <laughs> that it's, uh, it's 80 minutes of uh, sheer entertainment. You're going to be moved. You're going to love the singing. You're going to love the storytelling. Before you blink, it's going to be over, and you're going to wish it's going to continue. Uh, and it's, it's going to be a, a new piece of theater that you've never seen before. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much Thanks, for being Tyler. here and joining me, Michael. I've been speaking with Michael Williams, director and writer of The Water Carriers, premiering at the Schrott Center here at Butler. I'm Tyler Springer, and you've been watching The Butler Beat.